to record the last two meetings I did and I didn't do that. So I'm gonna do it for this one. Um, I think as you've already seen from the tabs here, we're talking about navigating Canvas and your student center. I'm the presenter, Tyrell Frederick. You already didn't see my name in this. Oh, there's already somebody, okay. Let's move on here. Here's the uh, workshop agenda for today. Um, we're gonna be doing introductions. I'm gonna introduce uh, myself to you, uh, what I like to do, who I am. Um, we're gonna be doing a Canvas work walkthrough. Um, I'm just gonna keep my screen shared and we're just gonna go through Canvas together. I think everybody's pretty familiar with Canvas, so it's gonna be really brief. And then we're gonna go through MySAC State, something some not everyone might be familiar with. And then we're gonna do a Q&A. So first off, a little bit about me. Uh, I've been working with Park for about a year. I'm primarily a history tutor, uh, but I'm teaching a 1X course to this summer. And I'm also gonna be doing a lot of the workshops every week. Uh, I major in history um, with a concentration in African history slash imperialism. And um, yeah, I, I'll be doing the 1X courses. So if you're enrolled in those, I'll be teaching those. And I'm from Germany. I moved to the United States when I was five. I'm a dual citizen. Uh, it's been interesting living in the United States. Uh, my dad was in the army, so we moved around a lot. It was a lot of moving. I went to a different school like every other year. It was an interesting experience, it was stressful, but I got to meet a lot of people from a lot of different places. So I think I'm very blessed for that opportunity. Um, I'm a huge gamer. Video games are like a huge part of who I am. Um, I remember as a kid in Germany, uh, whenever we always would go back, um, I would always walk in. My uncle was playing on his PlayStation 1 because it was just like 2000, early 2000 something. And I was like, man, what is that? He handed me the controller. I mean, I wasn't good at the game, but I was just like, wow, this is cool. And ever since then, I've just been playing games all my life, you know, so it's been it's been fun. It's a really big part of who like my identity and the picture of me on the right there is uh, me exploring a cave. Um, if you've ever talked with the Peak Adventures people on campus, they set up trips for students and I got to do that trip for free, like everything free. I didn't even have to get the gear or anything. All I had to do is just bring myself and a pair of gloves. Um, uh, we basically went ex to explore a cave and it wasn't like a, like a small cave. This was like we were literally crawling into a cave, like we actually had to crawl down into it. Um, it was a, just a recently explored cave. Not a lot of people have been in there before. And we had our headlamps. And this was a type of cave where it was dark. Like I looked down into the one of the holes in that cave and it was pitch dark. I was like, if I fall in there, I'm not, it's, I'm done. I'm, I'm all good, you know? So it was crazy. Um, you had to squeeze through really tight spaces. So if you're claustrophobic, it was a nightmare. Um, at one point of the adventure, we had to get on our backs and crawl um, through a very tiny space. And of course, so, you know, we're on our backs so we can use our legs to push us forward. Um, I was wearing very thick pants and they got stuck and I was kind of stuck halfway. So half of my body was on one side and my other, other half was on the other side, which was very terrifying, but I had, I was able to wiggle out of it with a few scrapes and bruises, but yeah, very cool experience. Um, despite the fact that it was terrifying, it was really cool because I did something that was out of my comfort zone and it really made me uh, realize like, wow, okay, I could do that, you know? It's not impossible for me. So yeah, I would definitely recommend looking at Peak Adventures trips because sometimes they're free and they offer them for free. Really cool experience. There are also bats in there and like cave spiders. And I was like, I'm not about that. I learned a lot about caves that day. Very cool though. But enough about me. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Park, uh, basically uh, where I work. So Park is basically a tutoring center and we tutor students uh, basically to help them with whatever discipline. And so let's say you're a biology major and you need help on a biology assignment, you can reach out to Park for free and we'll help you with your assignment. We don't charge anything ever for any of our tutoring sessions. If you need academic help, we are there to give it to you. And we will always be there to help you with any other subject. For example, if you're a history major, you need help writing an essay or you're an English major, you need help writing an essay. We will be there to help you. Even people who are doing things like engineering and stuff like that. We have tutors who specialize in that, that can help you. And those, these tutors are usually graduate students and they're seniors. So they're already very familiar with the coursework. And they've also usually worked with those professors before. So if you need help, come to us. You can schedule an appointment and we'll have one of our tutors help you. 
And it's usually individual tutoring. So it'll just be you one-on-one -on -one with another tutor. Uh, for example, I needed help with the World War II essay once. Um, my thesis statement and a few, my, my paragraph organization was all over the place. I talked to a park tutor. He sat down with me, looked at my essay, gave me some pointers and tips. I fixed my essay up and I got a really good grade on it. It was probably the best grade I had gotten on, on an essay in that course because I was just not a really good writer my sophomore year. I, I was pretty bad at writing and it was nice to have a tutor help me um, piece together how to improve my writing skills. If you're more interested, I have a little link here. Um, it'll take you straight to the Park uh, Center link, which goes straight to our link on the um, CSU web, CSUS website. So if, you're, if you have more information, if you wanna get in contact with somebody and set up an appointment, please do. So that's Park. And just a reminder, yeah, all the services are free. And now I'm gonna do a quick poll just because I wanna see how familiar everyone already is with Canvas and MySAC State. So if you're, just type in chat if you're familiar with MySAC State or Student Canvas or both, or neither. Yes. All right, both, okay. Yeah, yeah. So both, okay, so everybody mostly both of them, nice, okay. Nice. Yeah. Um, okay, good to hear, good to hear. So I can, of course, for people who are a bit sort of um, familiar with it, please feel free to ask questions throughout the entire, um, throughout the workshop, like even if I, I haven't stopped and asked, you know, this is the time to take questions, just uh, post them in chat. And then whenever I pause, I'll take a look at them and I'll answer them. So please feel free to be open to and ask any questions. Um, and even if you don't think it relates, I you know I can also help answer because, you know, I, I do have, I, I have been a student at Sac State for a while now, and I, I might know about some things uh, you might have a question about. And of course, if I don't, then I can just get you in contact with who somebody who might not, who might know more. Um, now I have another question before we move on. This is just a fun question, but do you prefer dogs or cats? This is an important question. Are you a cat person or a dog person? Dogs, 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 everybody's going dogs. I don't blame you. Dogs are fun, but cats, I would get both, but like, I'm scared to have them next to each other, but I guess if you socialize them. Interesting. Everybody has said dogs in every session. I get it though. Dogs are such a popular, I mean, I feel like cats just have such a unique personality, but yeah. Good, interesting to know, interesting to know. You know, system, taking some statistical information here. Um, anyways, so yeah, let's go ahead and dive into our main, um, our main, uh, I guess, tutorial here, which is Canvas. I'm going to open it. I'm going to be pretty brief with Canvas. It seems like everybody has probably interacted with Canvas at some point. So we'll go ahead and click on that link. And I took you to an example course here. Um, this was one of the courses I took like a year ago on medieval Russia. And this is kind of the average organization of a camp, uh, Canvas uh, course. You're going to have the information on the left. You're going to have things that are like you need to get done, which, of course, I have nothing to do. Um, you have announcements, so professors are going to be posting announcements about assignments, stuff like that. You have your modules page, and this modules page is usually how professors organize their assignments, their course material. Sometimes they upload their lecture notes and they put it under a specific module. Uh, this professor put all their essays under one specific module. Um, and for the week, they just did it by a weekly, uh, by a weekly basis. They had the readings and then they would have the, um, the lecture. And so you can just find all the information there. And yeah, make sure um, that if you get your invitation to your courses that you accept them. And if you have any issue with like accessing the course, please contact the instructor. Or even if you see something that the instructor, maybe something's wrong on their um, course, like something, a link doesn't work, or you don't have access to a specific assignment, uh, definitely like if you don't have access, like it's saying like you can't access it when you need to do it then definitely just contact the instructor. Sometimes, you know, they make mistakes and it's just always make sure you have open communication with them if you're having any issues online, technical issues specifically. Um, and here we have the assignments tab. Here you can see um, I had, these are assignments I already um, submitted. You can see the due date for those assignments on some of them. You can see that way if they're closed or not, you can see the grade and the grade, the grade um, input and then some courses may have a maps and figures tab. This is probably just a very history specific type of tab. Most people don't usually have that. 
and you also have a quizzes tab. So if your professor ever uploads a quiz and they say, hey, after after like a class and like, hey, make sure to take quiz four today, you know, you'll go on the quiz tab, they'll have a quiz four, right? You'll just take that. Same with discussion posts. The professor is like, hey, um, you have a discussion post due uh, tonight. Uh, you'll go under your discussions tab, find when that post is there, when that post is there, and then it'll tell you the due date. You're like, okay, I need to do the one tonight, so I need to find that one for tonight. You can also see how many people have replied to that post. And then if you need to join your class link via Zoom, you would go to the Zoom tab. Usually professors will have all the meetings organized here. Of course, this one's empty because this was a previous class, but I would just go to previous meetings, click all those. Now, I think most professors record their Zoom classes now. So if you need to go back to a class because you know maybe you need to study for the final or something, and this is just a, regarding like all classes in general, you can go to the cloud recordings and you can find a recording. Of course, I can't find one for this one because uh, this is an older course and I think I have to change the date. Oh no, yeah, so this, this professor didn't record any, but most professors will usually record them and you can watch them later. And your grades tab, really important tab because you can just get a lot of information. Oops, I accidentally clicked the backspace. Uh, your grades tab will give you a lot of information on, of course, what your grades are in an assignment. Uh, professors will also usually sometimes leave comments on your essays if you submit one. For example, uh, this professor left comments on this one. Um, I can open it. Actually, that opens up Turnitin. So let's say I click on this essay. Um, and yeah, he wrote that I had my commas because I, I done really bad. I use commas horribly. You can see the feedback that your professor presents in your essay. So you can see like this professor is talking about, OK, you need to fix this. You need to fix that. Uh, you know, I use by too often in my um, starting sentences. They'll highlight things that are not as good. So things like that, really important tools you can use to see your professor's feedback. Sometimes they add comments on the side and that's how you find their feedback. And yeah, that's the assignment portion. If I had to say one important thing about the assignments tab is that one cool thing you can do is if you think, like if you want to test um, your grade, like let's say you think you bombed an essay and you're like, how is that going to impact my grade? You can type a hypothetical score into the grade of the assignment and see how it affects your percentage in the class. I cannot do it for this class because this professor disabled grade calculation, but I might be able to do it for another course. So let's try. Um, I'm going to try in my, let's say my previous 124 yeah let's try 124 so let's go to grades oh i was a ta in that class that's probably not going to work um let's try another class here mm. history 100 so let's say i wanted to see oh okay so it makes sense because these are past classes it won't post but otherwise there would usually be a percentage in the right corner and it would tell you what your current grade is based on the grades you get in your assignments and you could just plug in a number. So that those are the main functions of Canvas. There are some other small tools you can use to help keep yourself organized. Calendar, really good tool. It'll basically organize every single part of your classes and put them organized based on course. So for example, you can see here, I, have an, I had an assignment due last uh, in May on the 25th. It's crossed out now because I submitted it. Uh, you can see the Zoom links and you can see all the assignments. So you can see here that like you can track everything that's going on in all of your assignments on the calendar and it does it for you. You don't have to input all of the dates or anything like that. So definitely use that tool because it is incredibly useful for organizing your, um, just to, trying to organize everything that you have to do because I know for Summer Bridge, everything is very um, compressed since you're doing everything in like a month span. So it's great to know your, uh, it's great to know what's due and when. So that's Canvas. Uh, I think everybody's pretty familiar with Canvas already. Does anybody have any questions about Canvas? I will elaborate as best I can on anything. You can just type them in the chat. All right, so not too many questions on Canvas, so we'll go ahead and move on to the next portion here, which I don't really think I need to do, 
but yeah, these are the key functions. Everybody knows how Canvas works, how to check your grades, how to check assignments. Now we're going to move on to a breakout room activity. You don't have to talk or do anything like that, but you can interact with people if you want. I mean, you can go ahead. Um, I actually would encourage it, but I'm just going to put everyone in breakout rooms and I want to give everybody the opportunity to play around with Canvas and make sure that they can access the courses they need to access. Um, and if they can't, then, you know, you can ask a question about that. Make sure you can get into the courses that you need to take and see the assignments for that courses, et cetera. You can see all those things. Uh, make sure you don't have any pending invitations. So I'll go ahead and put you in the breakout room, breakout room for about three minutes. So it'll be pretty brief. All right, I just opened up the breakout room. You should have an invite. everybody welcome back we're just waiting for the rooms to close get everybody back in here all right y'all uh we're gonna go ahead and move on to the my sac state portal this portal has a lot of stuff so please ask questions um cool stuff on here honestly um so we have my sac state and this portal has a lot 
if you want to get to my sac state yourself you can type in the search bar my sac state it'll pull up to this um you'll probably just have to log into it and it'll just take you to this page we're going to go on the student related links first so if you actually wanted to access canvas through this portal you could also do it in your email your student email i usually have those two things bookmarked so i have canvas and my sexy bookmarked which is really useful to get to both um i'm going to go over handshake first i think handshake's a really cool tool um, handshake lets you apply for jobs on campus which is very useful that's how i got my park job and it's also how i got my job at the library so you can just click on campus when you're on handshake it'll show you all the jobs on campus that we have available they have student assistant jobs open they have jobs open for resource guides a receptionist at the well international programs is hiring a student assistant they have workshop leaders um, student ambassadors um, there's a relaxation station oh yeah there is and there's a service desk assistant stuff like that um, and if you want to work at the children's center stuff like that so if, if you are interested in um, getting on campus employment, I would go on Handshake and it'll tell you everything that's available. And you just you know have to upload your resume and your cover letter and stuff like that. Next, another tool is really useful is the purchase your textbooks tool because it tells you what textbooks you need. Personally, I would not recommend getting your textbooks from the bookstore because they are horribly expensive a lot of the time. Um, Depends, I guess, really on the book. It specifically depends because sometimes you can return the book and get a decent price back. Like I bought a government book for my Gov1 class. I returned it and I got like 40 bucks back from the 45 I rented it for, I bought it for. So not too bad, but um, this, this tab will tell you every um, textbook you need for your class. So it'll load, for example, for fall in my history 197, I need what, two books. And you can see here, you can get them from the bookstore. I honestly wouldn't use any of these prices. I wouldn't probably get them from either of these because just because it's pretty expensive. Um, instead, what I would do is go on the library page. And as a Sac State student, you can access the library. And it's an incredibly useful tool because you get a lot of your material for free. You can check out stuff for free. For example, I took a senior seminar last semester on Latin American history. And I needed nine books for that class. And those books were very expensive. They were like big historical monographs, very expensive. And I was like, I don't wanna pay for these. So I checked them out at the library. For example, one of those books was Mexico City, 1808. Um, I searched that book in the database when I was looking to find a free book and it popped up. The whole book is available on the university library page online. So I can open up the whole ebook and read the whole book online without having to pay for it, which in my opinion is I have to log back in. So you would just have to log back in to access the material, but yeah, I'm logged in. I can go on ebook central and read the whole book online. I have the whole book, chapters one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, the conclusions. And yeah, so uh, that's how I, basically got my books because I would just check them out at the library. The cool thing about the library is that if they don't have the book, another library does, and you can request that book. For example, let's say I wanted to request the Panzeram papers. Uh, I know Sac State does not have the Panzeram papers, um, but I know because I'm trying to do research. I know another CSU has them. So you would just request it from CSU plus. You would tell them, okay, uh, could you, could I pick it up at the library? If you live 35 miles away from the library, you can request to have it delivered to your home address. Now, this is just an example. You can't really request this because it's actually a special collection archive that only San Diego state has and they won't give it to you. So that's just an example idea though. Like if you find a book that you can't find at Sac State, it'll say check holdings and then it'll be at other CSUs. Um, you can also request stuff through ILL, which is interlibrary loan. So libraries will loan materials out to other libraries. Um, for example, I needed a book for my World War II research and the book wasn't in any CSU campus or any United States library. So I ended up requesting the book from a library all the way in Denmark, and they were able to ship the book over to me, to the library so I can pick it up. 
So really cool service. You can get casual books too. Like uh, you don't have to just get, at, there's not just academic books at the library. You can get for fun books as well. Um, you can even get children's books. They have a whole juvenile collection. You can get um, sort of just average, you know, sort of popular literature now, like popular books that are out now. Um, you can get stuff like comic books and manga and uh, a lot of other different things. So if you want to use that resource, it's great because it's free and it's available to you. I think students can check up to like 25 books, so you can get quite a bit. So yeah, definitely use that resource. Saves you a lot of money when you're getting textbooks. Uh, next, we're gonna move on to the Student Center. And actually, before I talk about the Student Center, I was just wondering if anybody had any more questions about anything I just covered. Good question. Sure. Is it, um, does it make sense that when we press the purchase your textbooks that they don't show up yet since we haven't done presentation? Could you, could you repeat that question? Oh, sorry. I don't know if there's background noise, but I was saying, would it make sense that there's no books that pop up when we press on the purchase your textbooks since we haven't attended orientation yeah, yeah. yet? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if sometimes your professors take a long time to post the textbooks you need, and they won't show up. It's usually because the professor is just taking a while to figure out what they want to assign everyone. But once you have the information, I would just hop on getting those textbooks as soon as possible. Um, let's see. If you apply for an on-campus job, how does the money you make go towards your tuition? Good question. So if you are awarded, and that's that that whole that whole um, system that's typically referred to as federal work study. Um, if you get awarded federal work study. The money you make at your job will go straight to tuition and basically the way they do it is they will offer you the award your the student hr people will classify you as a federal work study student and the money you make is usually limited for example when you get a federal work study award it's usually about three thousand dollars and that's the amount you can make for uh and that goes straight to your tuition so it goes into your um payments gradually and that's usually how um, that's usually how that works. Because I did federal work study, and that's how it worked for me. It would just be put into my 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 paycheck. And I think also if you work federal work study, your paycheck isn't taxed as much um, when you're student like when you're a student assistant in federal work study. So that's how that usually works. It does go to your tuition though, but if it's not federal work study, it doesn't. You'll just get paid directly. And then you can make payments on the student portal. Are there any programs that help low income students help with paying books? I do not know of any programs on Sac State that help with books, but I do know for, hmm, I think, I mean, for me personally, I would always buy my books secondhand. I would always buy them used. Um, and there would be a fraction of the cost. So if you can't find the book on the library and you want to own the book yourself, I would recommend looking at half price books, thrift books. I remember buying books on thrift books. Um, I bought like a, a whole basically good copy, new cop, new edition of a book that like barely looks it was used for like eight dollars as opposed to the forty dollars I could have paid for it. Um, if you look around, you can find those books used for cheap. Um, I just don't know if there's any formal program. Maybe the CARES office might have something on that. The CARES office might have something on um, student assistance with um, getting textbooks. So I think they have stuff like that. They also they, they usually hand out grants and stuff for like that for that. And I would also just talk to the professor. Um, some of my professors they would just scan their book and upload it to the class portal. So um, and um, is it would it be possible for you to? Uh, there's some background noise. Is it possible for you to mute your microphone? Oh, was, uh, oh thank you. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, it's. That's basically uh, what I would do is just definitely reach out to the CARES office because they do give out grants or your professor. Because sometimes the professor will ask you for like the 15th edition of a book and you're like, do I really need the 15th edition or can I get the 14th for cheaper? Sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. Sometimes it's just a different translation. Sometimes it's a different, they just add a little bit more or an extra chapter, but yeah, that's what I would do. Um, 
I've always asked, I've always tried to find the cheapest option for books because I just hate spending so much on new books when I can get them secondhand. Um, but yeah, so that's, any more questions? Those are some good questions. All right, so let's move on to the academics portion of the student portal. So this portion's it's pretty dense because of the uh, amount of stuff that they have on there, all the tools, but I'm just gonna go over the main ones. One is enrolling for classes, it's a big one. If you wanna enroll for a class, let's say you wanna enroll for the fall semester, you would click enroll, you would click the search button, find what subject you want to enroll in. So let's say I wanted to enroll in a bio, biology class for fall of 2021. I would never do that though, because I'm a history major and I think I'd be horrible at biology. Um, so let's say I want to find a biology class for fall of 2021. Click that, there's over hundred classes, click okay. And if it'll load, once it loads, I, I didn't know there were that many biology classes. Anyways, so this loads all the biology classes being offered for fall of 2021 and at different types of biology classes and what area they cover for your graduation requirement. For example, biology one will cover your B2 requirement, your BT requirement, a B3 requirement, and I have no idea what that means, FL. <laughs> so um, it also tells you the professor. It also tells you the meeting dates, how it's being conducted. These are all online. And it will also tell you the section. These are all asynchronous, as you can see on here, the instruction mode. And it also tells you the status of the class. It tells you if it's open for enrollment, as in they have enough slots to be enrolled in. It tells you if it's closed, as in there's not even a wait list and there's so many people, it's closed. Or if it's waitlisted and you have to join a wait list to get into the class. So these classes are all open here. You can see some of these are closed with specific professors. And whenever you want the class you want, let's say I want to take web online with Russell Crow, 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 Crow. I was just gonna say Russell Crow, but um, you have to, and also this depends because some classes you have to, you have to take a lab, lab with them. Um, so this one, for example, I have to choose a second lab class because they have a lab attached to them. Um, so let's, so I've done that. You'll be automatically enrolled in the following classes next. And then, yes. Wow, well, you have to take three classes to do. Wow, oh, I do not envy biology major. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's a lot. Um, so then you would go to step two of three. Uh, once you enroll, I can't do that because you can't open, open registration is not, not active right now. So in the event though that it was, you'd be able to do the step two of three and then you'd be able to confirm your enrollment and it would add you to that class. Now, let's say you don't like a class and you're within the deadline to drop a class. How do you do that? You would go to the enroll tab, hit drop, and I can't drop anything right now because the uh, registration time is not open, but it would give me a list of classes. It would ask me which one I wanna drop. I would check it and then I would finish it and it would just drop it for me. I don't have to fill out any forms or anything. I can just drop it. Now, adding a class after the deadline might be a bit more complicated because you may have to do some paperwork. But that's basically how you enroll. So next, if you want to view your grades, you just view my grades tab. Let's say you want to see your grades from, uh, let's say, last semester. Let's say you want to look at it on a semester by semester basis. Oh, that was, that was really laggy. So let's say I can see my spring grades. Great. Okay. Good to know. I got that. Know how many points there are. Let's say you wanted to see your uh, schedule. This is really important because you can see your schedule with this. You go to Sac State Scheduler. Click here to open it up. Click your term. This would be undergrad, not post bachelor. Um, and I have all my classes ticked off that I'm uh, enrolled for. You can see here the classes I did for an example are on there as well, and they would factor into my. Uh, schedule, but they're not classes I actually want. After I have all the classes that I'm enrolled in, I would click generate schedule. And this is my schedule for fall of 2021. So you can see here that I have a 
in-person course, two in-person courses, a synchronous course, and a Herkiflex course. I still have no idea what Herkiflex exactly is. But um, yeah, this just kind of lays out my whole schedule. Really, really useful. If your course has multiple sections, then it'll show different schedules. For example, international organization, I think this has more than one section. You can see here, the same professor is teaching at different times. So you could generate more than one schedule. Let's say I wanted to generate more than one, depending on which one I chose. Well, actually, no, it's only one because the times are different. It's the only thing that's different about it. So that's how you can see your schedule. Really useful tool. Another really good one to use is the keys to degrees toolbox. This will tell you how close you are to graduating. Um, also, it'll give you a report of your transfer credit. It shows what everything was used to cover. For example, I took um, the, in high school, it was a while ago, I took the AP US history test. I scored high enough. You can see it waived my eligibility. It waived my need to take history 17 A and B. I took uh, AP lit and it waived my ability to take, I didn't have to take AP uh, English five. And then I had some transfer uh, credits from community college, two transfer credits. And that accounted for my area B life science and my area C arts. So I took an art history class at community college. So you can see here, that's how you can track what your stuff is being used for. You can also check your uh, progress to degree report. This will tell you all the points you need. Um, and it will tell you your grade point average and how many units you've taken. Um, to graduate, you need to take 120. So I'm not just there yet. I think by next semester, I'll have enough. So then we can move on to, let's say details. Oh yeah, it'll even tell you um, the number of points you have in every area. You can see here that I still need my G GE9 upper division. Um, actually don't even know what that is, but you can see here that I have all my points for specific areas for my major. And I think I also have points for my minor somewhere. So this will also show you your graduation requirements. So I need 120 units. I need a foreign language and my nine units of upper division, upper division GE. And I think that's covered by my upper division science class. That's the problem. And this will also, uh, I wouldn't use this meter. So yeah, this is the stuff you can use to track if you're on track to graduate at the time you want to graduate. Another useful tool is the academic requirements report. This thing literally just sort of lays out every single thing you need to make sure you're on track. So this will tell me here, I don't meet all the graduation requirements because I don't meet uh, the uh, unit count, but you can see I need an upper, I need a B level uh, language class. I need a, for this one, I see my general education isn't done. Everything is done besides my upper division science, which I'm taking in the fall. And my, what else? I think that's the only thing besides my research seminar. So you can see here, it lays out everything and it checks what you have done and what's in progress. Really good, really good thing to use, um, especially because, you know, you'll be able to check it yourself. You don't have to have an advisor look at it for you. You can check your own progress and figure out where you are and adjust if necessary, depending on how soon you want to graduate. Next, you have the finances tab. Finances tab is actually, before I move on to the finances, does anybody have any questions about the academics tab? All right, so we can go ahead and move on to finances then. Um, finances tab is really important for checking your financial aid awards and also checking like what you're being charged for because it's always good to know. Um, you can go to account inquiry under here. For example, uh, past tuition, you also have to pay fees. So once you pay tuition, you also have to pay these specific fees here. Um, I have to pay this one because you have to pay for graduation stuff, um, commencement and diploma fee. But these regular, the regular fees down here are the usual things you'll be charged. Um, and it breaks it down per semester and you can see when they're due usually um, sometimes you have fee deferments and it also tells you when these are due, like the term they were due. So you can see how to do that. You can also purchase a parking permit 
on this tab. And you can also set up e-refund on this tab. E-refund is really useful because let's say, for example, I took out a subsidized loan because I was offered one for 5,000 and I wanted to make sure that they didn't send me a check because I needed that 5,000 immediately. So I set up e-refund and the money went to, went to direct deposit instead into my account. Because otherwise, when you have money left over from financial aid, it takes them a long time to get it back to you because they usually send like a check or something and it takes a while. But you can set up direct deposit so that money gets back to you faster. You can also purchase a parking permit, like I said, and I right, so Sex State students and faculty. So you would log in and you would see my letters. Oh, so yeah, you can purchase permits here. Um, just put in your, and then also if you get citations, you can check those and you can purchase permits for specific amounts of time. I bought a two week permit and you can also buy permits that for the whole semester, they're usually cheaper. They're much cheaper than trying to do buy a permit every single day. Cause for parking that extends past two hours, you pay about $7 a day, which is a lot. Um, for two hours, it's four. So buying a permit can save you money and you don't want to get a ticket. And if you park, I mean, you can park off campus. You're just gonna have to take a bit of a walk. So if you're in a hurry, that would be uh, not as useful or carpool. But yeah, this is the um, activity tab. We're gonna go back to the other finances tab. Here on the view financial aid tab is where you can view all of your financial aid. I'm gonna use 2021 as an example because I, I, think, I don't think I have anything under 2022. So here you can see I was offered financial, I was offered federal work study. They offered 3000. So $3,000 I made from my paycheck working at the library would go straight to my student school fees. And then once my federal work study expired, I still got to work at the library. They just switched my student classification. So the money was going to me instead. I also had a scholarship. They sent it to my school and they sent it to the school and it was in that amount. What they did was they broke my scholarship apart by a semester because that's usually how they do your financial aid. They'll break it in half by each semester. Um, this one's not half because uh, it was a special circumstance where they awarded me more in the spring because of increased funding. So that's how that works. If you want to know when your financial aid will come into your account, you can view the disbursement dates. And I think you have to actually hit account inquiry and that's where it show, it'll show you. And I think we went over account inquiry, but I can't really show it because I don't have any recent um, disbursements. But yeah, so that's financial aid. Um, then you also have the accept slash decline awards. So let's say you are given the option to accept a fine, a federal subsidized or unsubsidized loan. That's what you would do. What scholarship did, oh, actually, let me ask this question. What scholarship did you receive or recommend applying for? So the scholarship you saw in the past post was a scholarship I got from my specific department. It was a history scholarship for history undergrads. It was for the Peter Shattuck Institute. So if for your major, usually they will offer scholarships. Um, there is a whole tab of uh, CSU scholarships. There's a whole tab right here, CSU scholarships. You can open it up and that's how I got mine. Um, you can click the apply button, it takes you to a whole different tab here and it'll show you scholarships. And you can sign in and find ones that are specific to your major. Like people who study psychology have them, athletes have specific scholarships, business majors have specific ones, STEM majors have specific ones. So always look at your, um, the ones offered by your department because they almost always have something. And that's what I applied to. Oh, wait, wait, where was I? Let me go back to the student printer. Can I go over how to get a parking permit again? Sure, yeah. So if you want to get a parking permit, I go to view financial aid or actually go back. It's in the account inquiry, account inquiry, purchase a parking permit, customer authentication. You just sign in and let's say I wanted to get a permit. You're required to register one or two vehicles. You would pick what amount of time you want it for. So let's say you wanted an online permit for four weeks. You would choose four weeks. You would choose when the permit would be effective for and when it would end. 
You can also just buy a whole semester um, permit as well by the semester. You can see you can get a summer one. I, I didn't get a summer one because I, I'm just, I don't think I'm down campus that long to really need it. But that's how you get a parking permit. Um, and also the scholarships. Yeah, just check out the tab, the portal. So any more questions? Yeah, so yeah, that's the that is the financial aid portal. It's a lot of information, but it's really useful. If you need to upload any documents for your financial aid, you can upload those documents right here under financial aid links. Just upload documents here. If they're asking for a specific document, find what type of document it is. Let's say they needed you to upload a PDF and you can choose what it is that they're requiring from you. Let's say you need uh, income verification. You can put that, browse, upload it, and you're done. So that's how you upload important financial aid documents. And you can also check your advisors on the right tab and you can contact those advisors to help give you academic advising and planning for your courses. Next, uh, you have holds. Holds are really important. Um, sometimes holds will show you, show if you have a fee deferment. For example, I have a fee deferment until the 3rd of September. That means I don't have to pay my submit my tuition until the 3rd of September. And if I don't pay my tuition, my tuition at that time, it'll put a hold on my account. Um, it says if your registration fees are not paid by the expiration date. Um, well, if you if you basically don't pay at the time, they can cancel the classes you're registered in, and they won't let you register until you pay. And if you they do that, they also charge you an extra like $150 to re-register for classes. So make sure you pay attention to that um, holds tab if there's any sort of hold on your account for any reason. Usually, you get an email. And it says like, oh, you should check your student center. You have a hold. So yeah, I would just pay attention to that. But otherwise, I would say that is everything for the MySAC State Student Portal. Um, quick overview of everything. Key functions. Um, I'm not going to do the activity because we ran out of time. Uh, does anybody have any more questions about anything? Canvas, MySAC State, the campus, anything about the campus at all? Could be anything. Could be about the squirrels. Squirrels are cool. Very hungry. But um, yeah, any questions? And we have like one more minute left and um, I'll make sure to keep everyone's attendance in hand. But otherwise, if you have any questions, you can um, go ahead and leave the session. Thank you for joining everyone. Have a nice day. I hope you enjoy Summer Bridge. many squirrels have ice encountered there's a lot they're everywhere they will crowd you there's groups of them at a time eight or nine they like to travel in packs and they will they will come up to you for food they're very friendly um they're very socialized with people so they'll come up to you sometimes they'll even try and crawl on you if you have food and you're like holding it in your hand i had one he was like he was like stepping on my shoe It was very funny. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Yeah, if you have any more questions, you can go ahead and go. Um, this session will be sent out. There is a lot of information. I that's why I recorded it, so it'll be uploaded. And the slides will also probably be shared as well. So don't worry about that. Yeah. Have a good have a good one everyone